I want to thank the Babano constituency branch and all of you from all parts of St. Lucia that joined that effort today. You made a lot of people afraid. Now, based on the energy I saw today, by 2 o'clock on election day, we will be able to call it for Babano will be one of the first seats that will fall back into the United Workers' Party column. That's at 2 o'clock. And by 2.05, the ancillary cannery seat will be the next seat that's falling back into the United Workers' Party column. I want to recognize my chairperson, Mr. Andre Lansico, and a lot of stalwarts from ancillary canneries that have been following the Flabo train in the east, in the west, in the north, in the south. Please pick them up, the hard-working UWP supporters of ancillary canneries. Thank you guys for your support. Mama Flabo, the St. Lucia Labour Party was hoping that you would get distracted when they had carnival. They were hoping that with emancipation, that they can distract you. They were hoping that by telling you that Alan Shastney is trying to destroy St. Lucia, that they would get us off topic. I want to say to Ernest and to Philip and the whole gang of the Labour Party government that the United Workers' Party will continue to ask for answers. We will continue to ask the hard questions pertaining to the running of this country. So whether it be on the national lotteries, whether it be on crime fighting, whether it be on the management of the healthcare situation in the country, and whether it be on the CIP program, we have one question, where is the money? And Mama Flabo, we will not stop asking that question until we find our money, until they account for our money, we remain focused and resolute because the money does not belong to them, it belongs to you, the people of St. Lucia. So, Alan Shastney, being the visionary leader that he is, and I remember many a times, I used to say, PM, why is it that Dominica was selling all of these passports. Sometimes in a year they did a hundred million in revenue. And we in St. Lucia, we would do maybe 10% of that. He said, Dominic, I am not after the money. I am after a program that is clean, that I can be proud of, that I can say to the people of St. Lucia that we have done right by your passport. We have done right by running your business. And so he said, this race in the CIP is not for the swiftest, but it is for those countries that can endure to the end. And so when I saw this last week that Dominica had revoked 68 citizens because they found out that the due diligence was not done properly, and so 68 citizens so far have gone through the cracks with fraud. I remember those words from a wise prime minister. When I saw that Bank of America stopped doing transactions in the CIP program to Dominica, and I think, oh my God, just imagine that Dominicans can also lose their ability to buy stuff online. All of you that buying stuff with Shopbox and West Tech, you know, Christmas coming, you might buy some wig, some false hair, you might buy stuff. You know, if you have a date, that kind of stuff, just to look slick, buy some nails, go on Sheen and get some shopping done. Just imagine that Dominicans are on the brink of losing that privilege that you take for granted. And when I see in Dominica that the citizens there now need a passport to travel not a passport, but a visa to travel to the United Kingdom. 
I remember the wise words of Alan Shastney, our great leader. I remember him saying, Dominic, that we must be disciplined, that we must be structured, that we must be patient, that we must make sure that we do the checks and balances. And no matter how long it takes, no matter how the people in the marketplace complain that St. Lucia has the slowest CIP program, he said, Dominic, we have the best run CIP program. Which is why today that you're seeing all the court cases and all the allegations of fraud about the St. Lucia CIP program. But after being in government for three years, the St. Lucia Labour Party cannot lift a finger and point a finger at Alan Shastney to say that he was corrupt in running the CIP. And the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance had direct responsibility for the CIP. Because there is a very strong relationship between your financial laws and the laws of the CIP. So that the CIP could be properly run. So that your passport is protected. So that your image is protected. So that the dignity of the country is protected. But with the Labour Party, we negotiated with Galaxy that they should have 700 passports. 700 families that they can sell to. We felt that it is wrong to have someone to come in and just get our passports and bastardize our passports and just use our passports to build a hotel. Alan Chastney said, I'm looking for a true partnership. He said, the people of St. Lucia will help you to fund the CIP program, your development at Canals, the hotel, by 60% of the cost. But he said, I need you, the company, to go and apply for a loan from a bank and ask that bank to lend you the money so that you are putting in something and St. Lucia is putting in something. Alan Chastney refused to allow any investor to exploit the people of St. Lucia or their passports. And that was the difference in the leadership and the management of the CIP program under the United Workers Party. And so while they are trying to distract us, while Richard is sending all these abuse on social media, and his abuse has no boundaries, it's not just the politicians like me and Spider and Guy, he's also sending abuses and abusing people within the health sector we saw this week. Regardless of who you are, a member of civil society, you could be a vendor, he abuse you. It could be anybody that rise up and speak to uphold our democracy. Richard Frederick and the St. Lucia Labour Party has tried their best to intimidate those people. And Mamai Flabo, we must show them our true metal. We must show them that we are not afraid. We must show them that we will continue to ask for the questions. And we are looking for the answers. And we demand to know all of the business concerning the CIP program and other initiatives. And so they came in and they changed a deal that was well structured by a great leader. And they said that they're going to move from 700 pass families to allow Galaxy to sell passports to as many as 6,000 families. It means that in every family application, that you could have potentially four passports per family. At 6,000 families, it means we're talking about 24,000 passports for the hotel. Now, that is a lot of money. That is an incredible amount of money. The hotel was supposed to cost $350 million. Now, why would you allow a developer to raise as much as $1.2 billion in revenue. Why would you make a deal so bad that you will allow the developer to make at least $750 million extra on the passports of the people of St. Lucia? Putting your visa-free access to the UK, to the EU at risk putting your ability to use your credit card and trade internationally 
and send money and receive money from Western Union and, and putting all of that at risk because you want a company to make money. Mama Flabo, does it make sense that if the hotel costs 350 million, that the company should make in excess of 750 million in profits? Does that make sense to you, Mama Flabo? If I was running your business and you were my boss, I am sure, Mama Flabo, that you will fire me. And so we must demand the resignation of Ernest Hilaire because that is the worst deal of the century. And when we see those things happen, we have to ask ourselves, who is benefiting? Who is getting a kickback? Who is getting paid? Why is it that something that makes sense to the average St. Lucian is being prostituted in the way that they are? Now, if that wasn't bad enough, they went and they said that, look, we need to give Galaxy another deal. So in, on top of the hotel deal, they said we want Galaxy to also be the main financier for the year of infrastructure. And they announced in their budget that this year will be the year of infrastructure. So they're not saying anymore that it's raining, that they cannot do roads. Because you, the people of St. Lucia, have told them that you are not impressed with their excuses. You are not impressed with the way that they have managed the infrastructure. So now they say that Galaxy will put 100 million dollars up front and they told us that that money will be used for the year of infrastructure mama flabo they said that the year of infrastructure funds were launched in the month of march we are now in august and we still see the roads in this country in a state of disrepair we still see potholes and swimming pools everywhere in this country people are driving your cars are being destroyed we want to know has galaxy paid the 100 million dollars that the minister of cip told us when he addressed the nation that he had to put up front we want to know hilaire we want to know have you received the 100 million dollars or is the money still stuck overseas? When was the last time you spoke to Galaxy? Are they hiding? Are they on the run because of this case? My information is, is that the people that are trying to sue Galaxy cannot find Galaxy and cannot find the CEO Les Khan. So we want to know now, where is Galaxy? Where is Les Khan? Where is our money? Is our money coming back to St. Lucia? We demand to know now. So, Mama Flabo, this is the saddest state that our country has ever been. This is worse than the UN scandal. And it's disappointing that Philip J. Pierre would accuse our leader, a man that loves this country so much, a man that could have been a citizen anywhere in the world, that when he became a senator, he gave up his U.S. citizenship so that he can give public life to St. Lucia and serve St. Lucia. Now, Philip says to us that the same Alan Chastney, who started jazz 30-something years ago, who served as director of tourism for a salary that was lower than he could have gotten overseas, who came and took a measly salary as a minister of tourism rather than going and work in his father's companies a man that has sacrificed so much you are trying to tell me that this man all because he's looking for answers answers that you don't want to give you want to tell the people that he is destroying saint lucia now mama flabo I will tell you what Alan Shastney and the United Workers Party wants to destroy. We want to destroy the corruption in this country. We want to destroy the friends, the families, and the comrades of the Labour parties who have a cabal and everything goes to them. We want to destroy nepotism in this country. We want to destroy the lack of management of healthcare. 
We want to destroy the threat that threatens our visa-free access. We want to destroy the threat that affects our ability to do banking online. That's what we want to destroy. That's what we want to eliminate from this country. And so we will not be afraid. We will not be sidetracked. We will not be distracted. We continue to ask for evidence. Now, the biggest one that I thought is the biggest episode in this scandal is that the company that is appointed to do the background checks for all of Galaxy's files, we are now being told that this company is owned by one of Galaxy's employees. So look at this, Mamai Flabo. You hire me to be the security guard for a program, but yet I am one of your employees. Whose benefit do you believe I will have? Whose back do you believe I will have? I want the minister, the CEO of the CIP, and the prime minister to explain to the public whether this allegation is true. How can an employee of Galaxy be the owner of the same company that does the background checks for Galaxy passports as they are processed? And so we demand to know that now. Now, as this allegation was floated, we see that Galaxy have wiped all of their websites. All of their websites. Why did you clean up the website? Why did you remove who the directors are? Why don't you come to St. Lucia and face the press and do a press conference and explain to the people of St. Lucia, try to clear your name so that we can all feel some level of assurity. But you see, when people have things to hide, when people have things to hide, Mama Flabo, when people have things to hide, they will be afraid to tell you how much money is in their bank account. They will be afraid to show you all the CIP transactions. They will befriend a minister who will say that he needs to get permission from the company to give you, the people, information regarding your own citizenship. And so this is where we are today with the CIP program. This is the scandal of the century where the government is in St. Lucia, appears to be in cahoots with Galaxy, and they are ripping all of us back. But Mamai Flabo, we still have to ask them, who is the chairman of CIP? Has the chairman now resigned, or has he not resigned? You see, when I was minister, I ran many statutory bodies. There was the tourist board, there was village tourism, um, and at every point, when I appointed a chairman with the help and the input of the cabinet that I was working with, I had to know whether my chairman is on or he's not on, whether he's in or he's out. So how can the minister, in response to questions asked about whether the chairman has resigned, say to the journalists, well, you will have to ask the chairman whether he has resigned or not. Mamai Flabo, it is clear that they have something to hide. What does Hilaire have to hide? You cannot tell us whether the chairman has resigned. You cannot tell us whether how many passports or how many families you have allowed Galaxy to sell. You cannot give us all the information we've been asking you for about the CIP program. But you have the goal to go and boast about tourism growth. And as I close, I want to really focus a, a, a lot about, a, a bit about this tourism growth. So Hilaire says to us that he is so proud that St. Lucia has surpassed 2019 by 5%. I want to say to Hilaire, I want to say to Hilaire this, my friend, you are late. There are 11 destinations in the Caribbean since last year have already surpassed their 2019 
pre-COVID figures. And so what is very disturbing about your record is that you have spent over $100 million and you have only been able to bring in 90,000 passengers. So let me show you what has happened. You've borrowed $80 million to host the World Cup. You've spent $10 million on jazz. You gave ICC and West Indies Cricket Board several millions in taxes. You have gone further and you have spent quite a few million on carnival. Now I support all those things. And all those things are great for the country, great for the people, great for small businesses. But you cannot boast about a measly 5% growth when you spend $100 million US, $100 million in growth, which is three times the annual budget of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. And so if I had to grade what you have done, I would grade you from a tourism management perspective, a big F. You are a complete failure in the management of tourism and you need to step aside and bring a real government to manage the affairs of the industry. So, Mamai Flabo, this is the most important election of our time. Crime is bad. Healthcare is the worst it has been. Agriculture is down. Cost of living is high. The roads are bad. Mamai Flabo, I want to say to you, in light of all this, you need to buckle your belt, strap your boots, and get ready for the battle. It is coming soon. We need to organize each constituency. We need to march in the east and in the west and in the south. We need to organize ourselves. We need to comb those voters' lists so that they don't cheat us. And we need to ensure that we get Alan Chastney and the United Workers' Party re-elected and put St. Lucia in a place where the true potential of our country can be realized as one people, one nation with a common destiny. Mamai Flabo, I thank you.